so when I hold a smartphone in my hand, I'm holding a million dollars in my hand, and that, and then think of the theological implications of that, the power that's associated with that. How would you handle handing a million dollars to your kid? Welcome to Truth, Love, Parents, where we use God's Word to become intentional, premeditated parents. Here's your host, A.M. Brewster. I'm very excited about today's interview. Not only is this interview a first of its kind, but it's also just like our previous interviews. Just like all of our interview episodes, you will be encouraged and challenged from God's Word. But unlike our other interviews, today we're not talking about a book or curriculum. Today we're talking about a piece of technology. And guess what? Our special guest is giving away a phone. That's right. You heard me. We're giving away a mobile phone, but not just any phone, a phone that will help someone in your home better worship God with their tech usage. I hope you're excited. Here we go. Enjoy. Welcome to another Truth Love Parent interview episode. I'm your host, A.M. Brewster, and today we have a very different kind of resource for you. You see, normally we highlight books, podcasts, other teaching materials, And if you're interested, you can check out the various resources we've shared in the past by going to truthloveparent.com forward slash giveaways. But today we're going to discuss a piece of technology. Like I said, we've never done this before, okay? But it makes sense because we've been talking a lot about tech over the past few weeks. We discussed it in our biggest parenting challenges you'll ever face series. And the Sutherlands and I have been talking a lot about how to help your family glorify God with your tech. So today we want to share a very practical tool that may be an integral part of helping you and or your kids glorify God with their tech usage. Today's special guest is the founder of a company called Techless. His name is Chris Casper, and we're honored to have him with us today. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored that you're breaking the mold of what you've typically talked about. So thanks. I'm really excited to talk today. That's right. You know, I hadn't thought about it from your perspective, but yes, it's like a, it's like this massive honor and, and weighty responsibility that could just come crushing down on you because of its significance. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but, but what I think is fun is you've been talking about all this philosophical stuff, you know, intellectual, hypothetical, but we're, yeah. we're, I'm really excited because we can hit the rubber where the rubber meets the road and that's where we live. And so I'm so excited to be diving yes. in on that ground level with you. So definitely this is application at its finest. Well, why don't you go ahead and give us a, just, you know, before we talk about this resource, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about you, a little bit about your family, tell us about uh, where you're from and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm a regular guy, right? I love Jesus. Um, but some backstory, um, I grew up in a little town in Texas. I grew up with a fifth generation family business. I have had kind of, this is sort of a second career for me. I had a career in film um, and kind of where film and art intersect. I was definitely working to work to influence culture through that. Um, and definitely I made a few waves. I had a, a, one of the pieces I did showed up on ESPN game day on Super Bowl. Uh, cool. Chick-fil-A hired me to work on. So that was super nice. fun. Um, but, but since then I moved back to the one place I said never, I was never going to move. Um, God had good plans. So I'm back in the small town where I grew up in Texas and I have my wife and we're pregnant with our fourth daughter now. We're looking at just, uh, you know, three, four weeks away. And my wife and I have done foster care for a while. We've been married um, for, I think, eight, nine years, nine years now. And uh, I've had a handful of kids coming in our house. We've launched a series of home churches in our small town. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of Chris in a nutshell. I've been doing Techless for a couple of years, and it's just really been a, a, a wild ride, and I'm excited about what God's doing. So, oh, That's a fantastic nutshell. Yeah, you mentioned the, uh, the, the house church thing. I tell you what, I've moved around a lot. This is my 22nd move coming down here to Brevard. Oh, wow. And um, <laughs> I've always been very thankful that the Lord has allowed us to f- get connected with fantastic churches um, where we've lived. But uh, definite many times I've just had this this kind of this, this pull this interest this desire to to investigate more and to get participate more even in a, in a home church setting. I have uh, I have visited a couple home churches and just really love the atmosphere. Is that what you're primarily doing now? Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I mean, we just have it's just it's kind of my other family, right? It's it's almost <laughs> replaced my biological family as far as our closest relationships and just have some sweet sweet conversations. And what I'm most excited about is just the fruit we see coming out of it. I mean, lives being changed. That's what matters. And I'm so excited because that's happening. So I I would highly recommend it. If you want to dip your toe in the water, go check one out. Um, But ours is working really well. It's been quite a journey and a blessing for our family. 
Well, praise God. So Techless is kind of new for you in the span of your in your lifetime. Tell us about Techless. What is what is this uh, this organization? Yeah, yeah. So a couple years ago, I sort of took this crazy plunge, leaving the comfort of working for a fifth generation family business. And I said, okay, I want to go do something to influence the world for the kingdom of God. What can I do? And I came up with a bunch of different ideas. And I'd always, always done, you know, film and art and all of these things are sort of cultural influence, the tip of the spear, right? Wherever art goes, uh, writers go next. Wherever writer goes, music. And then after music, then you start hitting the news and then culture follows. So I've yeah. always wanted to be at the tip of the spear and realize that tech particularly our devices, was just this window to people's souls. I mean, it's literally something that we use on every single day. Every single day. It's like one of the most intimate things that we use. Um, and pair that with we had foster kids and we couldn't give our kids, uh, you know, <laughs> we couldn't give them any phones because there was nothing out there on the market at the time that was even appropriate to hand to a kid safely. Um, and it's kind of this perfect storm of becoming this uh, idea that was a crazy ambitious idea. Um, it was something that, you know, I'd never, did not have the capabilities technically to pull off, um, but read in Psalms 127 that it says, unless the Lord builds the house, those that labor, labor in vain. We said, okay, here's a high risk thing. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can change the world. And at the end of the day, if this thing works, it's going to be God. And and so we just dove in, and that was two years ago now. And so we've been working for a year and a half to launch the product. We launched about six months ago, and it, it's off to the races since then. That's fantastic. And that's I'd love to see that uh, the, the company is founded on your beliefs in Scripture and your trust in the God of the Scripture. That's, I mean, that's the best place to go. It's where we are with our nonprofit. It's like, Lord, if this is going to succeed, it's not going to be because of anything we do. It's going to be 100% because of what you do. Yeah, and, and the cool thing is, is God likes to work with situations like that where it's so obviously him and not obviously you. Oftentimes he'll break you to the point to where it has to be him. And yes. So we're reading Joseph right now in our home church and you know he humbled him, stuck him in prison for years before he brought him to power and being the right hand of Pharaoh. So we're definitely leaning on him in this. That's fantastic. But before we talk about uh, the featured resource, okay, that Teclas has created in an attempt, I think, to really lay a foundation for today's discussion. I'd love for you to share with us this cool philosophy or maybe even theology you have that technology is a lot like money. You and I talked about this before. I thought it was so great, and I think it's important for Christian parents to understand uh, that technology is the way it is and that we approach it differently than we do other things, and it really doesn't make sense that we do that. Yeah, yeah. So I I mean, the last two years, I've just been rereading Scripture in a whole new light. Now that I'm kind of the founder of a tech company, I need to know what I'm doing. And like, and, and so as part of that, I've really been developing my own personal theology of technology. What does that look like? And it's both academic, it's practical, and it manifests itself in crazy ways when it comes to the design of the product. Um, and so we could talk for hours about the, the general theology of technology and all these things, but diving into specifically what you're interested in, um, this thing, you know, I'm, I'm really diving into the idea that technology is power um, and technology. I, I would say right now we have this very undeveloped sense of the theology of technology and we don't, it's hard to visualize. Mm. I mean, it's one of these things that just happen to us. If you think about it, go back a hundred years and a man or a woman or a family living a hundred years ago had more in common with Jesus <laughs> way back in the day than they have in common with us. I mean, just things have just happened to us in the last mm -hmm. 50 years. I mean, it, and it affects everything. It affects church. It affects the way we think. It affects, I mean, and so this stuff has just happened to us and we have a very undeveloped sense. And so it helps to visualize things. I think Jesus used pictures oftentimes to describe things. And so I've started looking at a smartphone as a million dollars. And so when I hold a smartphone in my hand, I'm holding a million dollars in my hand and that, and then think of the theological implications of that, the power that's associated with that. How would you handle handing a million dollars to your kid? How would you trust yourself with a million dollars? What would be the bounds, the conversations you would have? Um, you know, if you look at all the warnings in scripture against or about money, not against money, <laughs> money in of itself isn't evil. There's good uses of it, but it has and, you know, it's written about prolifically, and it has just tons of warnings. And the main reason why is because it distracts you. 
from the kingdom of God. It distracts you from this thing that God wants us, designed us to have, to live out fully, and it just turns us left or right. And so that's why there's these red flashing signs that say, hey, watch out. You can't enter the, you know, it's easier for a camel to walk through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be part of the kingdom of God. Um, and so looking at phones or, or technology in general, it has a lot of that same potential. I mean, money gives us access to information, to knowledge, to sin, um, you know, privacy, whatever these things look like in phones, give us access to information, knowledge, sin. Um, and, and so I think just as I'm trying to work on developing this theology of technology, I think it's good for us to just think about, like, I mean, there's tons of Dave Ramsey courses on how to manage debt. And, and there's, there's this very robust conversation going on with the, in the church about it, but we don't have one about tech. So it's kind of a very broad overview. We can definitely dive into details of that, but that's a good introduction to the concept, at least. Well, I think that, uh, and, I, and this is not something that you know, podcast hosts just say, uh, I, I mean it 100%. I would love to have you back onto the show. We could do a whole, whole show just about um, the theology of technology, because you're right. Very few people are talking about it. I mean, we have the social dilemma, right? But those people yeah. don't know God. Those people didn't provide no, a cure. No. You know, those people said, oh, there's a big problem. Everyone be afraid. Run around. The sky is falling. And to a large yeah. degree, what they said was accurate. I mean, there, there are some significant Absolutely. problems, but they didn't offer yep. the cure. But a theology of, of, of technology is going to look to God's word. It's going to say, okay, what, what, is, what can we take here? what timeless truths can be applied to this and provide us answers um, for how to do that in a way that glorifies God. And you're right. I mean, um, you and I are the generation where this thing didn't exist when we were younger. We still had the phones that were connected into the walls. Uh, maybe somebody had a, had a, you know, one of those big uh, car phone bricks, you know, um, something like that. If they, if they had a lot of money or whatever, some rich uncle, but these things uh, we didn't grow up with them. Our kids are growing up with them. And this generation we don't even know really, like, we don't understand them. We don't understand the, the struggles and the situations, the roadblocks and the temptations they're going to encounter having growing up with this stuff. So I love the imagery of the million dollars because I, I promise you, if this were a million bucks, I wouldn't hand it to my children. I love my kids. I, I would hand them 20 bucks. I'd hand them a hundred dollars, but I'm not going to hand them a million dollars and just say, Hey man, go do whatever you want with it because they're not ready. They're not wise enough. They don't have enough discernment. They're not mature enough. And I think that's a beautiful picture that, and the things, it's so funny. This is on uh, Do Not Disturb. Nothing is coming up on here. And yet when the, when the proximity thing goes off and the, and the screen comes up, it, my eye just goes right to it, you know, because we're trained. Uh. Um, yeah. But uh, the idea, uh, turn it out to you guys instead of me having to look at it. Um, but what, when you were talking about that, it made me think about the parable of the talents. So we have this master who has these servants and he gives them different talents. And it doesn't specifically say it in the passage, but it's easily easy to infer that um, he gave them the talents based off of their skill sets, based off of their previous track records of whether or not they could be trusted with it. And of course, I didn't mean that everyone was going to do it perfectly. The person who got the one talent, one talent, still a lot of money. Uh, the person who got the one talent, he failed. And there were consequences for that. That master was not going to give him one talent again. In fact, the master took the talent and gave it to somebody else. And so we see that when we're dealing with money, uh, that it was a biblical principle that you, you need to give it to the person who is going to steward it for God, who is going to be faithful with it, use it as a tool that's going to glorify him and not use it to serve self. And yet we see this thing, whether regardless of how much money it cost us, we see this thing as a thing that we can toss at our kids and everything's going to be okay. Man, really powerful. If you want to build on that, please do. I, I'm, I love, I'm loving where we're going with this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Um, just you were talking about the the way that you would hand this over to your kids, right? You'd give them twenty dollars, then a hundred dollars. You and guess what? That would happen over many years. I think you would probably have full intentions to give them the million dollars sometime. Maybe when you die. Uh, maybe sooner, depending yeah, on yeah. the character. Of your kid, depending on how much you trust And the amount of them, money in my bank account. <laughs> yeah, and, and the greatest act of love for you is, I mean, if you had a million dollars in your bank account that was dead, earmarked for your kid, the greatest act of love for you to do would be to dole that out to them in a way that would bring them life 
and and set and, and and help them. And that may not be immediate. That may not be all at once. It might be and, and so you would have to use a tremendous amount of wisdom and prayer through that journey. I mean multi year journey, talking through that, coaching them through that, having other people coach them through that. Here's books associated with it. And and as time goes on and they grow in character, they grow in trust, they grow in wisdom, then you with wisdom carefully dole out more money and as long as it's a blessing to them you can keep giving them freedom but if it's a curse to them then you stop and and that's kind of it's the same multi-year journey that i think intentionality is really the key word here and and we really because it's just yes. falling in our laps <clears throat> we aren't intentional um, but i i'm i think we should be we, we definitely should be so that's that's the big premise yeah here. and I'm, I'm kind of riffing off what you're saying again too because i actually knew a guy who was approached by an elderly woman. Um, this man's son had invested in this lady, uh, helping her with her, her yard and whatnot over a long course of years. And this one was very well off. And she basically told the man that she wanted to leave his son a million dollars in her will. And um, the man very wisely said, please don't do that. So he knew his son and he knew uh, the temptations and the struggles. And the man specifically said, if you want to be a blessing to my son, this is what I suggest. And he, he named a dollar amount that would be put into an account specifically to pay for uh, his education and so on and so forth. And then a little bit left over after that. But he knew, I mean, how many of us, if somebody came up to us and said, I'd like to leave your child, you know, a million dollars in my will, would we know our children well enough? Would we be mature enough? Would we have enough trust in God to be able to make the wise decision as to whether or not that's actually a good idea? But when we bring this back to technology, because this isn't really about money. I think everyone understands these concepts in regard to money. They're not going to hand their their child a, um, a, a wad of cash, okay? And yet— If they love them, they won't. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But, yeah. we, but people who you know, love their kids uh, do hand them iPads. Do give them, you know, fourth graders, third graders, you know, with with smartphones, completely, you know, with all the internet access they could possibly want, you know, taking their, their phones off to school. And families are doing that. And uh, we, we, Chris and I just want everyone listening today to recognize the fact of how inherently dangerous that is because of what technology uh, is. It's a tool, but it can. It's a tool that can be used to glorify God, but it's a tool that can be used to serve self, just like money is a tool. And we need to start seeing it this way. And I'm so glad that we laid that foundation. Um, now, so we're talking about resources. We're talking about using them to God's honor and glory. And I want to transition and talk about the wise phone, what this resource is and how we can use it to please the Lord. Uh, it's this amazing, great product. And I want to have plenty of time to talk about it. But before we do, all right, I want all of you listeners to know, all right, Chris and Teclas are doing something really, really awesome. They are going to give away a free wise phone to one TLP listener. So who's that TLP listener going to be? I don't know. It could be you. You can enter your name into that drawing up to three different times. So just head to truthloveparent.com forward slash giveaways. There you can learn everything you need to know about this amazing uh, opportunity to win a wise phone for you or for one of your children. All the information will be there that you need to know for how you can enter into this drawing. And again, Chris, thank you so much for the amazing uh, offer of giving one of the TLP listeners a wise phone. That is so cool. Yeah, we're, we're excited about what you guys are doing in the world. And so anything we can do to support that and help out a family, we're happy to be part of that. Oh, we really appreciate it. And I know that someone's going to be very excited when they get theirs. Okay, so let me ask you, Chris, we're talking about the Wise Phone. It's a really cool name. Everyone gets it, smartphone, Wise Phone. But go ahead and tell us, what is this Wise Phone? What makes it so wise? Yeah, yeah. It, it's really simple. It is a phone, right? And it looks like a smartphone, but it acts like a dumb phone. <laughs> and so I, I don't want to be degrading here, but it can call, it can text. It has a few basic just practical tools, right? Clock, calculator, camera maps, nothing crazy. There's no advertising. There's no social media. There's no games, no access to anything pornographic. Um, it's really just a pure and simple phone. Now, see, I'm getting this. This is make perfect sense to me, but I know that I'm the guy just like you. We're in the mix, middle of it. We're trying to figure out. You're, we're, you're creating a, a theology of technology, okay? But there are people who might be going, well, well if, it, if it can only make calls and, and texts, what good is it? So let's talk about what makes this phone 
so wise? Why was is why would it be valuable to have a phone that looks and acts like a smartphone? You know, it's got the touch screen and everything, and yet it doesn't have the capability of that. What what makes that wise? Yeah, yeah. So what we really, you know, if we go back to what we were talking about a little a few minutes ago, that technology has great potential to distract us from the kingdom of God. And so I think if we sat down and said, here's what I want to accomplish in my life, we oftentimes fall short of that. Technology is one of the things that contributes to that. And so what it's doing is tech has become not just this passive tool. Like if I have a shovel and I set it in a, in a garage, it just sits there until I go and pick it up. It's this passive thing in my life. But tech has become something that is invasive. It's a shovel that grows legs, walks around, follows you around, pokes you every three minutes and says, use me, use me, use me. <laughs> and so... And we, we wonder why we have so many holes in our yard, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so really what we're doing is we're trying to empower your will. We're trying to empower your true intentions and we're setting a hard boundary built in at the device level, which is the key to this, to where you can still go have a complex, sophisticated tech life, but it's not in your pocket constantly bugging you. And so, I mean, I, I use WiseFone and it's, it's, I just, I need to check email. I just go to my computer and I check my email on my terms and it doesn't distract me during dinner time when I'm talking with my family. So that's the high level concept is tech on your terms and we've taken away all the distracting things, all the addicting things, and you can go and pursue them when you have the notion to do that uh, more intentionally instead of it seeking you out. My sister uh, has five children, and uh, one of her children uh, was using the word stupid. Now, my sister and her husband use the word stupid. It's not like, you know, it was a completely taboo word in their home, but I loved how she approached this with her daughter. She said, um, I don't want you using that word. And knowing that she herself used it and didn't want to, you know, seem hypocritical or give her daughter the wrong impression, she specifically explained, it is, you have proven to me over time that you don't have the discernment necessary to know when that word is appropriate and when it's not. And because of that, until you learn that discernment and you grow in that maturity, that's going to be a word that you're not allowed to use. And I was like, wow, I'm my little sister, so, so wise and mature. Um, but that's what I'm hearing with the wise phone. Uh, this is something where we say, okay, listen, um, it may, maybe it's not maybe it's not a consequence like a punishment or something. Uh, you know, maybe it's just even like my son uh, last year he turned thirteen. Uh, we had a manhood ceremony, and one and one of the things that we we're we're going to do is that we are going to um, say, okay, uh, we're going to start teaching you now how to use tech in a way that glorifies God. And so we got the smartphone. We, we were looking actually at a bunch of flip phones and other, other things like that. Um, but we went ahead, we went with the iPhone and we stripped it down as much as we could. So basically it made calls and it sent texts and slowly over time, he's been getting um, access to different apps and different things that he can use to make it a, a better tool. And he's proving himself. So whether it's a consequence, whether, okay, you know, and I used to work at a boy's home, you know, a lot, I mean, 90, well, let me just be honest, 100% of the guys um, who I worked with had interacted with pornography at some point or another. So whether it's one of those things where you've clearly shown that you're not mature enough to use this tool to God's honor and glory, and so therefore we're going to have to, you know, modify it until you learn discernment, or the child's just starting off and like, you know, we're going to give them $10 before we give them 20 or 100 helping them to grow into it. So obviously uh, the wise phone would be a fantastic option uh, for a young person because it does that thing. You know, I need to be able to get a hold of my kid, but it's not a tool that can be used to absolutely trash their, their spiritual life as they're, you know, using it to consume all these, you know, horrendous things uh, on the internet. Uh, so that's beautiful, but it's not just for kids. You said you have a wise phone. Um, why would this be a valuable resource for an adult? Well, it's the same analogy you just used. I mean, if the the kid couldn't use the word stupid because he didn't prove him, or himself or herself, um, wasn't trustworthy to use it in the right context. The truth is, is that nobody uses their phone. Mo almost nobody. <laughs> you said 100%, 99% of people <laughs> don't use their phone in the way that they actually really want to. Um, I mean, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, said, I use my phone too much. Uh, okay, we've got a challenge here. I mean, you know, and, and so I don't trust myself with my smartphone. I tend to be, I mean, being personal and vulnerable here, I fall into Netflix binge watching and it's just scrolling Amazon and playing random games. I mean, like, I, it just grabs me because it's designed to grab you. It's made to grab you. I mean, algorithms know you better. I mean, this is, goes back to the social dilemma thing. I mean, algorithms at this point, 
know us better than we know ourselves. Mm. They understand human psychology. They understand the human heart and have manipulated it to the nth degree. And guess what? They're getting better and smarter and smarter. And so, so the only way to fight that is by setting hard boundaries. I don't, like I said, I don't even trust myself with this stuff at this point. So, Chris, I'm suffering under conviction and you just need to stop now because... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, no, you're 100 percent right. I can I can stand here as um, as a child of God, and I can say I, multiple times I find myself and I'm going, why am I doing this? Why am I why am I still here? Why you know I, I need to put this down or you know getting realize I'm getting distracted. Like we have a rule in our house, one screen at a time. So when um, when if the TV's on, we're not looking at this, right? But so often an email will come in. And it's a work-related email or it's whatever else. And during, you know, TV's on, I pick it up and I look and I realize eh, I'm, I'm not keeping to this, this family plan that we had. And of course, I'm the adult. I, you know, I have a good reason. I'm not just playing some game or what. And sometimes I am playing some game. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's, it's true. We all struggle. And I think that really one of the, the key redeeming uh, character traits of a Christian is love. But I think another one that's way, way, way up there is humility. Uh, the the ability to be able to say, you know what, this is a problem. Um, I recognize that I have an issue. I recognize that I'm sinning in this area, and I recognize that I need help. That's uh, James chapter 5, confessing our sins one to another. That's um, being able to uh, strengthen each other and sharpen each other and to uh, admonish and encourage and rebuke and exhort each other. So uh, that's that's fantastic. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we recognize that oftentimes it's not just our kids, like you said, who are struggling. So that's, I thank you for, for your own transparency. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I pop my SIM card back and forth. I use Wise Phone a lot of times, but on, so I'll go on some trip internet. I went to Pakistan in January, right? I didn't, I can't use Wise Phone traveling internationally, doing all this type of complex, you know, business interactions and things. So put my SIM card in and I can see direct correlation with my spiritual, <laughs> I don't know, happiness or fulfillment in life. And it, it's a trend that follows how much I use my smartphone. That's my own personal experience, you know. Um, but, but there's definitely, a, there is a connection there. Um, and it's correlated for sure. Now, you, you mentioned something technical there. I want to hop on that real quick. You mentioned a SIM card. So um, can I just assume that the Wise phone is like any other phone? It can be used on any, with any carrier, um, any you know, SIM card can be popped into it? Yeah, so so we wanted to make it. I mean, a lot of people are really scared when transferring all this stuff. I mean, it's a confusing world, right? Consumers are like, oh, I don't want to switch my carrier and phone number and contact importing and all this stuff. So we spent a lot of time really trying to make that straightforward and simple. Um, we support most carriers, ninety-seven percent of them, all the major ones, AT and T, Verizon. Keep going down the list. Um, the best way to know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we have a compatibility checker on our website. So go on our website, pick the phone you want. Uh, check the compatibility and then basically you get your phone you put your sim card in um, if you had an iPhone there's a couple things you have to do to turn off iMessaging um, and then you're you know import contacts and you're ready to go so we tr really try to make it very straightforward to be a seamless transition and battery life is the battery life good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so this is funny, actually. So I've, I'm designing all the, you know, I'm kind of the chief product guy, right? So I'm working on all these high complex abstract features and all this stuff. And then I went on Amazon and just scoured reviews. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of re reviews of minimalist and simple phones out there. And there's a ton of them that have horrible ratings. But one of the weird trends I was not expecting that people care about is battery life. Like that was the number one thing, almost three times mentioned three times more than anything else. So uh, this is not a advertising claim, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I put my SIM card in my wise phone and I don't have to charge it for four or five days. Um, that awesome. might be reflective of how little I use it um, sure. or how little I talk on the phone, but I really lasted a long time because we're not sending tons of information back and forth to servers, yeah. all this stuff. You're just calling, you're just texting. And that doesn't use, there's multiple antennas in here and we don't use them that often. And so, you know, if you care about radiation, again, definitely not an advertising claim, but the radio, the, the, the antennas in this thing are activated much <laughs> less than a typical smartphone would be. So therefore there's consequences to that, which leads to longer battery life, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. So was well, the owner of a, uh, the former owner of an iPhone six battery life is really important. Oh my word. Those, those yeah. batteries were horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. That's awesome. Well, that's, that's why I asked, because I'm one of those guys who's like, that, that's important to me. 
Yep, you're not the only one. So definitely, you can get two days, no problem. I'll I'll put my stamp on that one. <laughs> oh, sweet. I got, yeah, we can, we can call that one advertising. Sure. Yes. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today to talk about God's Word, talk about uh, the Wise Phone and Techless. Please uh, share with our audience how they can connect with you and Techless if they're interested in learning more. Yeah, it's real straightforward. Techless.com. Um, you can always shoot us an email, hi at techless.com. We read everything. I read all the all the emails that come in from our customers um, or p- potential customers. And if just know that if there's anything we can do to help, you know, really practically help your family or you personally take a step into a more intentional life, living out what God's design, this life that God's designed for you to be. In regards to technology, we want to help make that happen. We want to be the answer where the social dilemma has the problem right (laughs) we want to get the answer right and so that's our that's our purpose and we want to help you in that so and i just want to say to all the tlp listeners that this is the type of company that you want to support you know i just be really frank with you Uh, i didn't even plan to say this but uh, when it comes to the type of products and companies and authors that we get behind obviously we can't endorse everything everyone does chris and i have only spoken a couple different times he could be a real jerk but (laughs) (laughs) But the reality is his company is based in his beliefs. He wants to glorify God. He created uh, the Wise Phone because he wants families to be able to glorify God. And that's the type of company that we need to be supporting. We all have all of these, these woke companies pushing their own beliefs, their own worldviews that do not align at all with scripture. I had somebody contact me recently, a similar product to what Techless has in the Wise Phone. And they were interested about getting on to Truth Love Parent, but they're not going to because they're a company who doesn't really care about God. That's not their that's not their main focus. I mean, they're, they're, they may have noble endeavors, but we really need to consider uh, supporting companies that are actually there to support our families and not just um, supporting you know the basic needs that all humans have, but really uh, specifically supporting the, our spiritual goals and our spiritual desires. And I think that's a really important thing. It's one reason I, I love Techless. And after my first conversation with Chris, I was like, I definitely want to get behind this. So I encourage all of you uh, to learn a little bit more about Techless, learn more about the Wise Phone. Go to truthloveparent.com forward slash giveaways to learn how you can uh, potentially win a free um, a free wise phone, which is very cool because really we are all about connecting our listeners with the resources and tools that you can use to glorify the Lord in your homes. Okay. Now with all this talk about technology, okay, I hope you're starting to understand. I know many of you are, you already do understand you're getting it, but I hope you're starting to understand how incredibly influential it is. Okay. It can have a huge impact, a massive impact for Christ or it can be used as an idolatrous sacrifice to the puny God of self. And as Chris um, said, most of us use it for the wrong thing. Now, not all the time. Some of us use it for the right thing. But generally speaking, we know, just like if we had a million dollars, I got, I've got a million dollars that says if we had a million dollars, we'd probably spend it, at least some of it, on stuff that really wasn't a good idea. Just stuff we shouldn't have been spending it on. And we're doing that with our technology too. And God has put us into our children's lives in particular to help them learn how to glorify him with tech instead of stealing that glory from him. So everyone, please share this episode on your favorite social media outlets. We want to redeem social media. We want to give people stuff that's worth actually talking about and listening to. Also, again, check out TLP so that you can learn how you can uh, win a wise phone. And I hope you'll join us next time as we open God's word to discover how we can parent our children for life and godliness. To that end, we'll be sitting down with Shannon Popkin to talk about a topic that I'm pretty sure is going to get us canceled. (laughs) I'll see you then. Truth, Love, Parents is part of the Evermind Ministries family and is dedicated to helping you become an intentional, premeditated parent. Join us next time as we search God's word for the truth your family needs today.